welcome to Hobby Adventures. Now for a very late and overdue layout update. Coming up next. For ballasting, I don't really have a method going on, not just yet. I'm uh, still trying to find a really good method to go with. What I've done so far for the ballasting over there on the, on the back side of the layout was the spoon method. Not exactly the most ideal or the most fun method to use. Uh, just in case if you guys don't know, the spoon method is basically using a spoon to spread the ballast out. And then after what you would use is a paintbrush to dab and spread around the, the ballast. Now there is one method that I am gonna try uh, to use for spreading out the ballast. I don't remember the YouTuber that I got this from, but this is not my method. It's not something that I came up with, but I thought it was pretty cool. Take a water bottle, you figure out where the track lines up on the cap. And then what you wanna do is you wanna cut out where the track is going. So that way you have something to, to follow the track around. And then you go ahead and you slice across an opening so that the ballast actually pours out and actually and and the cap spreads it out so we're gonna go ahead give this a try see what happens is just go back and forth until it wears some lines in okay that actually did it I don't know if you guys can see it yeah, two lines right there. I'm gonna trace it over with the Sharpie. Okay guys, so essentially this is what I'm gonna do. The vertical lines here is gonna be the guide for the track and then the side slots over there is actually for, or the sideways slot is actually the gap that's gonna be open for the ballast to come out. I have to say, this is actually turning out really good. So the slots are there so that the lid has a way of following the track around. So, okay, so that worked out. The next thing to do is we're gonna cut out the slide slots right there. Uh, so that way that ballast has some place to come out. As I leave the cap gluing to the actual bottle, I'm gonna go ahead and start weathering my rails. Um, so I did a little bit of a test piece right here. Let's uh, zoom in and take a look. All right, so it's looking pretty good. I think that part I did a little too much, a little too heavy on the paint, but it's looking all right. So these are the colors that I'm gonna be using. Uh, bright yellow, cinnamon brown, geranium red. These are all acrylic paints. I just have a palette over here. Just went ahead, dropped it, and I'm gonna mix it. See how it turns out. So, trying to get it like that, more or less that rust color. And for applying it, all I'm just using is a foam brush. Just dab it right on the tip and then just get the edges of the rails. So it's almost like dry brushing. And uh, just slightly go over the area. Now what you probably wanna do is in some areas of the layout where there's less traffic on the rails, you probably wanna add heavier rustic paint. But for the, the more traveled areas, we're just gonna do a light coat. And if you get anything on top of the rails, just run your finger right across the top. Afterwards, I'm gonna use my Bachman Easy Track Eraser or, yeah. And then I'm just gonna go right across on top. Erase the, the paint, the mistakes that I did. I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm only gonna do the visual side of the rail, so I'm not gonna do this side. I'm just gonna do that side. All right, so let me finish this up so that way I can uh, start ballasting. After about maybe 10 minutes of painting and destroying one sponge brush, I think I got it done. Looking pretty good. So for the passenger line, I don't know if you can really see it, but I did a very light paint. Uh, I didn't want it to be too heavy on the rust, only for the fact that I'll, I just want to make it look like it's not a very old rail and it's uh, being used constant. Uh, when we go further back, I went a little bit heavier on the rust paint. Uh, basically what I wanted to do is I kind of wanted to dull down the shine. So as you can see the middle line it's it's not so bad so it's like a semi new and then the inside over here it's a little bit older you know rusting uh, and then same thing with the coal line going in. There's another angle over there. A little tip for you guys. If you guys really want to weather your track, make sure you weather your track before, before you put scenery because trying to get in the inside over here was a little difficult. All right, so recap of what I did was took a bottle, cut it in, cut it down, glued the cap to the bottle, created guidelines or slits so the rails can travel in between. And then I made this big opening over here so that the ballast can fall out and 
go on to the outside of the tracks and go in a little bit in the inside. Now, another thing that I did here, I don't know if you guys can see, I did a little bit of a 40, I cut a little bit of a 45 over here. So that way it'll push down the ballast in between the rails. So hopefully it'll glide a lot easier. Let's do a little piece. I have my ballast. Let's add a little bit. Okay, that's good. It already started coming out a little bit, as you can see over here. Let's go back. That caused the mess. Ah. For the most part, it was actually working until I let go and caused the mess over here. So. But yeah, I think it's going to work out really well. So if you look in this area, this is actually where it was actually working properly before I made the big boo-boo. But fell down, doing really nice. I like it. So then I guess you would just come back with your finger. Clean up the ties, or even with a small paintbrush. So, I think it's turning out pretty nice. Ahead of my, I got ahead of myself. <laughs> Turned out really good. Really good. Okay, so before I forget, I found out who I got this idea from. Uh, his name, well, I don't know his name, but his YouTube channel is Cheap Trains. I'll put up a link at the end of the video so you guys can go check him out. All right, so with that line done, I'm gonna go back with the paintbrush and sweep away just the extra ballast. Now, this thing isn't perfect, but damn, it's real close to being perfect. All right, so there's the closer look. So I swept away as much as I can from the ties. Uh, this paintbrush is just perfect. It's about the same width as the ties. So as I'm brushing, it removes the ties on the, uh, removes the ballast from the outside ties and also inside as well. So, and then I, I don't know if you guys can see, there's a little bit of a lip right here. So what I am going to do is just take the paintbrush and just pack it down. But as I'm packing it down, I kind of push it to the out as so. The ballast is down and it's groomed. You can see where I started off over there, or actually where I finished and then started the new one. Uh, coming right around, as I said, I groomed the sides of the ballasts as well as inside. The one part that gave me the most trouble was actually inside there. Couldn't get the, the paintbrush in, so you can kind of see it's kind of wavy inside. I did my best. Uh, there's actually one spot right there that I need to add a little bit more ballast. Then over here, I added a little bit of ballast around the concrete pad where the signal is gonna be. Trying to be as smooth as the cam with the camera as I can. All right, next step is to wet everything. So I'm gonna use something called wet water. It's water with rubbing alcohol. So my mixture is, it was like 200 mils or whatever it is. Anyway, so I marked it up to, um, no, it was actually 150 with the rubbing alcohol and it was actually 70, no, it was 90% proof. And then calming all the way up and I filled the rest up with water. Uh, should have been at the 900 mark. And then for glue, it's just Elmer's white glue. Uh, it's a 40-60 mix, 40% glue, 60% water. Uh, threw it in here. 
shook it around. The applicator that I'm using is this. It's not really tacky glue. There's nothing inside. I saved the bottle. So what I did was I did the mixture inside the big Elmer's glue. And then I pour it as I go with this applicator right there after it's wet. The reason why we wet it before we put the glue inside is so that the watered down glue actually seeps into the ballast. If you don't pre-wet it with the rubbing alcohol water mix, the glue will actually be causing a mess. And the reason why you add the rubbing alcohol, it actually breaks the tension. It allows the ballast to absorb the glue water mix a lot easier. So you're gonna see, you're gonna see what I'm talking about as I do this. See. So I just go ahead, put it there. Uh, that's a good shot right there. Whoops. Don't worry about the mess. It's actually gonna dry clear. That's what's really good with this Elmer's glue. All right, let's do the other part. Everything is soaked with the glue, so now it's time for the waiting game. This is gonna take a couple of days to cure, so let's wait. Everything is nice and solid. Glue has dried. So this whole area here that was open that I didn't put the ballast, I put grass here. I used. These are the two blended turf uh, that I used. I also put a little bit over here as well. this off I'm going to use the green blend. Next I'm going to use the earth blend. I'm going to vacuum the area so it can pull up the loose stuff. Uh, usually what I do is I put pantyhose or something over the edge of the vacuum cleaner. So that way it catches the, the blend and then after I can recycle it. Next, I'm going to be doing a very precise spray just in the area with a water and rubbing alcohol mix. Next is my 50-50 my glue mix, uh, water and glue mix. I'll let that dry. Continue on sinking the cliff face, just using those two turf blends. Turned out pretty good. All right, so a couple of boo-boos. I actually have to soak this up and remove the ballast. It's supposed to be a three over two signal head that's supposed to go over here. I haven't glued it down yet, but it's there. So that's one of two signal heads that's gonna be there one that's gonna go there, and one that's gonna go here. But this one I'm gonna leave for last, only for the fact that it's right at the edge of the layout. And the last thing I need is to break it. Like I did over here with the street lamp. So that is it for our Arcadia update number 15 for November 2018. There was a lot of waiting game just for the gluing and waiting for the glue to set. So that's what took most of the time. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, Remember, keep on modeling.